Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at developing some G code to do some pre startup cleaning for the Creality CR10. So, a longtime viewer, Dr. Dave, wrote in and asked uh, if I could develop some G code that would help clean up um, basically the buildup and the stale plastic from the nozzle, etc., before doing the first print. So I thought that was actually a pretty good idea because one of the things with the old Da Vinci's, what they used to do with their proprietary slicing software is they used to lay down uh, a rather thick band on the edge to kind of clear everything out. Because the one thing that can happen is the plastic can get kind of stale in the nozzle. And that's a little bit why you get that buildup of, of gunk or as Dr. Dave, now he's a medical doctor so this is okay for him, snot buildup on the bottom of the extruder because what happens is this, the, extra, the uh, retraction happens this is heated and cooled and then what happens again when you're done with the print and you just turn the printer off you know this plastic which has you know been at the you know it's a glass point or point where it becomes kind of cushy um, you know kind of begins to for lack of a technical term uh, maybe it is a technical term kind of crystallizes in there and that's why you get that harder build up down there and it takes more temperature to melt it etc so what I did is I came up with some G code, some uh, what I call prefix G code that you can run in the startup section of your slicer to actually do that. Because one of the things we don't really want to run a skirt around here because what you're going to do is get all that quote unquote snot built up out here in your in your skirt, and then when it moves over like three or five millimeters to print your object, what's going to happen is it's going to bring that snot potentially into your first layer. You know, here's actually a cube where this has happened. You, I don't know if I can get this in here, but at this bottom piece, this is exactly what's happened is the snot has come in to the cube from this. Now, you can kind of clean it off and, and everything, but it does affect your first layer and it does affect the overall quality of your prints. So, what I've done is developed some G code that does this. So, tell you what, let's hop over into the computer, take a look at the G code of how it works and then we'll come back and we'll actually see it run here. Alright, well we're in the computer now and what I want to start out with is the first line of code here. So I'm issuing an M7, M117, I'll spit that out, uh, which is basically a command to send whatever comes after it to the LCD screen of your printer if you have one. In this case I'm going to say clean so you know the code is running. Now on some printer versions this may just flash some it may be persistent so it's going to depend upon the version of firmware you're running but again the idea is here just to let you know that it's running the next command i have i've commented it out for the most part because especially if it's used with cura cura will always prefix your startup code with its temperature codes and so if you were to put this or have this uncommented then what would happen is this would override your cura settings now uh, if you're an immediate to advanced, what you may want to do is just actually paste this code in at the header of your G-code, starting G-code, rather than using Cura Startup. Because one of the things I'd recommend, again, only if you're intermediate or advanced and, and know how to do that, is to set this at a higher temperature. One of the things I find if I'm going to print my PLA at, say, 200 degrees C, upping it to 210 or 215 helps clear out the nozzle. Um, you know before the print then the temperature drops and it prints but if you're a novice and really don't understand this and just going to paste this code into Cura leave this section commented out. The next one uh, is the M107 command in short we're just going to turn off the layer fan we don't we don't need nor want the layer fan running at this point. The next piece we're going to issue a G21 Long story short, this just tells the printer we're going to work with metric numbers. If you seem to be so inclined, you can change it as G20. I don't know of anybody that uses G20 on a 3D printer, to be frank, but hey, possibilities are out there. So again, that's what we're doing here. Now, when we go to G90, what we're doing is we're forcing absolute coordinates. What this basically says to the printer is wherever you're located at, that's where you're located at. So that's going to be our starting position because what's going to come after that is we're going to issue a G28 command which is going to home the access. So wherever you're at is fine, but now go find your home position so it's going to toggle all three of the end stops to determine that position. Now once that position is determined, we're actually going to instruct it to move over one millimeter and this is what the G0 command, G0x1 is saying is move over one millimeter and then also on the Z move up 
0.15. So now on the Creality, is going to move the head up. If your bed moves on your, say, like the Tron XC, it will move the bed down. Um, again, this will start uh, the setup routine. And then we're doing this at a feed rate, travel feed rate of 9,000. Now, the next thing we're going to do here in the code is we're going to issue a G92E0. So this basically says, uh, you know, very similar to setting the absolute position, wherever the extruder is set, you're now at zero. Consider yourself to be zero because we really don't know where the extruder is set because maybe the printer is just starting up, so it's lost track. So this just sets a reference point because the next piece we're going to do is the actual run. So we're going to issue a G1, and we're going to tell the, the uh, firmware basically to go from uh, where it's at up here at Y0, X1, to remain at X1 and go to Y290, extruding 100 millimeters of plastic at a feed rate of 500. So this is going to push a good sized band of plastic out over the 290 millimeters. Now, what happens is once we get to the end, we now know that by this time, there's a very good chance, and let's hope so, because we've now pushed out 100 millimeters of plastic, that the, that the extruder is primed, that the hot end is full of plastic. So we're going to issue uh, an E0 saying we're going to zero out the extruder. The extruder is you know primed and ready to go. Because then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to prepare for our destringing run. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to retract the filament by three millimeters again at a feed rate of 500 to pull it back out of the bottom of the nozzle to reduce the stringing is the logic here. Now, the next piece we're going to do is we're going to issue an X3 command, a G1X3, where we're going to move this over by another two millimeters because remember, we're at X1. We're going to keep it at Y290. We're going to raise it to a safe Z height of 15 millimeters. So I want to pull it up because this is going to be our first shearing action, if you will, by pulling it up. Because right now, is if you recall, we're 0.15 millimeters from the surface. We're now going to go up 15 millimeters. So this is our first shear point. So we're going to actually create two shear points to de-string the uh, filament. From here, what we're going to do is, again, let it remain at X3, but now we're going to tell it to travel to Y0 at a Z height of 15 millimeters. So this is our second shearing action. So we've now sheared upwards and now we're going to shear forward. And the logic of this is very important because what's going to happen is from here, instead of pulling it diagonally into our print where this, this plastic and stringiness could end up in our print, we're keeping this all to the edge of the bed. And it's a long enough travel move both up and forward that you know pretty much we're going to leave all of the nastiness at the edge of the bed. So now once this is complete, uh, we're, we're basically pretty much done. So we're now set at a retraction of three because we retracted it up here. Now, I've got this uh, commented piece of code here. And again, if you start finding that you're having under extrusion problems when it's starting, what may be happening is your slicer, because again, I can't accommodate for every slicer and every potential configuration in the world. Uh, what it's doing is it's re-zeroing the um, extruder. And if it's re-zeroing the extruder, you have a three millimeter gap now. So you're going to have to push three millimeters of plastic before anything comes out the end if you re-zero. So if this is the case and you're finding this the case, just uncomment this line because what this will do is push it back to an E3, or sorry, to push it back down three millimeters and it'll be at the nozzle tip again. And so if you zero it out again, it will be where your slicer software expects it to be. But if you're using Cure, in most cases, this will be fine just as it is. The other thing I highly recommend, especially if you're doing this, is to turn off the skirt. So skirting can be rather problematic. So the intention of skirting is to prime the nozzle. Well, we've already primed the nozzle here. We've more than primed the nozzle. And the piece is, the skirt's usually three to five millimeters of your actual piece. And the problem, at least I find, is that a lot of that nastiness of the priming action gets pulled into the print. And, and a lot of times, defigures or deforms a little bit of the first layer because it kind of gets caught in it. And so 
if you have a skirt also turned on in your slicer, what will happen is it will do this run, then it'll go do the skirt, and then it kind of creates all that nastiness all over again. So turn the skirt off is what I highly recommend. So now the next big question is, how do you set this up in your slicer? Well, I'm going to show you on Cura. Most slicers I found pretty much work the same way, and I've done a screenshot of this. Uh, and I'm going to pull it up here. And kind of a long story short, I'm just pasting this in at the top of... Um, so I'm going to, I should back up here a little bit, I'm going to start G-Code in the um, Start and G-Code tab. And again, um, you know, all pretty much all versions of slicers I've seen have some sort of, uh, allow you to have a preamble type G-Code. And you can see the G-Code sitting in here. And then uh, we come down, and then what we see here is Start of Cura Code. So I put this in here so you can see, and then now what happens is it has... Um, variable holders so we see here sliced at day date it will start filling this in now the piece is is for some reason cura always puts um its variables at the top so it will even prefix this prefix code for some reason and that was one of the reasons that i brought up um talking about you know commenting out this m109 here for your temperature because what would happen is having M109, which I just simply don't have it over here in this version, um, would be problematic. It would override it. So that's how you get it into Cura. And again, most slicers work the same way. So now we've walked through the code. We've seen how to put it in. Let's head back to the printer and actually see it in action. Okay, so we're back. So the first thing is you saw in the G-code it's going to do is going to home the access. So we're doing the home run right now. And we're laying down the first um, line. So this line is going to be 290 millimeters and it's going to lay down 100 millimeters of filament. So this is going to push through 100 millimeters of filament. As I mentioned in the G-code you can up that and it's going to just push a bigger band. But 100 should be a pretty good amount of filament to kind of push out anything that's really left down there and you see it's kind of it's pushing it through I don't want to run it too fast because I really want to get the adhesion down and I want to get the extrusion to happen so now I've hit it now I was going up to its safe Z height of 15 and notice how it comes back here rather than going straight over here because right here I pull this off you can see it's left all that snot at the very back of the printer and now with no skirt it's already primed and it's up here doing its thing so I'm going to get a better um, print as a result of this and so again I think this is um, pretty much good for uh, the Creality pushing out 100 at the 290 length on this side now you are going to lose a little bit on the bed because I am moving it over a millimeter so if you're, you're going right to the edge which I don't think it's really practical. You might bump into a bit of a problem there. Uh, but I would say to that, it should be pretty good. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting and you found this G-Code useful. As I mentioned in the G-Code section where I went over the code, uh, it's easy to modify for any type of printer you have, matter of fact. And uh, so if that's the case, hey, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget, Swag Shop up there and subscribe button over there. Let me know in the comments below what you think also. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.